Welcome to the NTG video series. In this video we're going to demonstrate how to connect to NFS, particularly using your VMware environment, and some of the benefits that you might see because of it. Some of these benefits include things like immediate space savings, simple configuration, easy and flexible operations to, to grow and shrink your volumes, more efficient space usage and better performance, and the ability to share storage between Windows and Unix systems. Our demo environment today consists of two ESX hosts, one vCenter server, a couple of FAS 3140A uh, controllers, plus some disk shelves and some virtual machines. So here we are in our VMware environment. We've got two ESX servers, and if we head up to see the data stores, we can check those out as well. We've currently got one NFS data store, and one fiber channel data store along with some snapshot data stores connected. The NFS data store has got about 20 gig provisioned, about 16 or 17 gig free. If we click on the cluster, we go down to the NetApp menu option, go to provisioning and cloning, we can add in a new NFS data store to both ESX hosts fairly quickly. We can select our storage controller, we're just going to use the first one. We can select our data store type, in this case it will be NFS. We can add in the data store details. This includes the name, the size, uh, which aggregate to put it on. So we're going to select 20 gig leave the name as the default and the aggregate as the default but we're going to thin provision our data store and we're also going to auto grow it. Uh, we're going to auto grow it by 5 gig at each time and we're going to set a maximum of 40 gigabytes uh, as the total size of the data store. Click on next and then click on apply and it will start the process of creating the data store, creating the volumes, mapping it to the ESX servers and then setting up the storage. So a whole bunch of tasks have pushed through pretty quickly. Um, the one down the bottom is the main one, that, that NetApp data store allocation. As soon as that gets to 100%, we know that the data store is ready. If we head into the hosts, we can see that the data store has not yet been created. But if we head up and uh, the, those last two tasks have been created there, and as it's refreshed, that new data store is now available. Um, that data store is available on both ESX servers. Uh, it's been created for it would be created for all servers in the cluster. Clearly, on the other server, um, if we head into configuration and storage, it's there as well uh, with the same size and mapping as the other ESX server. If we go down into System Manager. We can do a refresh and see that that new volume has become available. If we check out the space usage, we can see that obviously we haven't used any space yet. If we head up to edit, we can look at the settings that the volume has been created with. Um, obviously that volume is thin provisioned as we selected uh, and the fractional reserve is set to 100. Auto size is set to turn on to auto grow the volume, and uh, some of those NFS options have been selected as well automatically for us. We can resize this volume on the fly, as you can with almost any NetApp volume. Click next, and it'll take us into this wizard. Uh, we changed the total capacity to 30 gig, so we're going to grow this volume. Uh, if there were any snapshots we wished to delete at that time, we could do so, but uh, there aren't any available. So we go next and next, and that process is already finished. Um, just refresh that to make sure, but you can tell that the available space has been updated to 30 gig. Back in vCenter, all we need to do is press refresh on the data store, and that new 30 gig size has been made available to us. Uh, that's on both ESX servers simultaneously. If we go back into System Manager, resize again. Um, this time we're going to resize it down. We're going to make it 5 gigabytes. We're going to change the snapshot reserve to 20%. This is something you might want to do if you wanted to store more snapshots. 
click next and then next again and once again that volume size has been changed down to 5 gig total back into virtual center we can once again press refresh on the ESX server storage and we'll be able to see that that available space on that data store has been changed to 4 gigabytes. Um, obviously the extra 20% is that 1 gigabyte that is not visible in here but that is visible and available for your snapshots. If we migrate this machine we can see that the uh, data store is available ready to use. We can move this machine across to that new data store without any problems at all. While doing that we can see that the other NFS data store is getting a little bit low in space. Of the 35 gig there's only 11 gig free. So let's head over into System Manager and we can turn on deduplication on that data store and use that extra space on the fly. Dedupe is running at the moment. Um, it's a little bit of the way through. So if I just press refresh we can tell that it's 23% done. Uh, we've already saved 18% of that space. So if we head back into Virtual Center, we can see that that space is not available in the NFS volume. Um, that's still on only 11.45 gig free. So let's check on how the dedupe has gone. The dedupe is finished. We've saved 77%. So if we go back into Virtual Center, we can refresh the data stores, and that space will then be obviously available. Uh, once again, that's available to both ESX servers and no further action needs to be taken in order to begin to use that space. So we can see from this that it's possible to greatly simplify your storage environment using NFS. You can see the deduplication benefits immediately, make more efficient use of your space, update that space on the fly based on change requirements which happens all the time. In addition to that you can uh, allow data sharing between users more easily between users of the users of the Unix and Windows platforms using NFS and SIF sharing simultaneously. Thank you for watching this video. If you want any more information um, or would like to check out our website and discuss anything that you've seen on here please have a look at the website on www.ntg.com.au. Thank you.